this is Debbie from Lime Doodle Design and thank you for joining me for Doodling with Debbie. This month I am back in my comfort zone with my watercolours. I adore autumn, cosy evenings, woolly jumpers, the lot, but in particular the changing colours. Even the dim damp days have appeal, except for when trying to video. I had half a dozen lights on trying to get an evenly lit work surface for today. But hey, I'll take a little video trouble for all that fabulous moodiness that nature is throwing at this time of year. You may know by now, but I love muted colours, and for me, autumn is an overflowing plate full of inspiration as flowers fade into shabby colours and leaves lose their bright greens for deeper hues. I absolutely love it and in my element in autumn. Today I'm using the Thankful Flowers set that came out in September as part of the monthly card kit from Sam's His Stamp. September is such a busy, full-on, inspiring month of stamp timber craziness that this gorgeous stamp set sort of fell through the cracks of my creative to-do list until now. As I film this, there are a few of the kits with this set still available. However, if the kit has sold out, then you can still get the stamp set separately. One of my favourite ways to use a floral stamp set is to gather images to create a border, either along the top or bottom or perhaps around a corner. It creates a lovely frame to support the sentiment. And let's talk about the sentiments in this set. I really like the big bold greetings and also that there are accompanying smaller sentiment strips to pair with them. I laid out a rough arrangement on a piece of Arches cold press watercolour card in the Misty. Rather than stamping the flowers first, I started by concentrating on the sentiment and that's because I wanted to ensure I had a really good impression of this bold sentiment before moving on and spending time colouring. So I aligned the sentiment centre top of the panel and stamped it in clear embossing ink. I did this three or four times to ensure I had a really good impression on the textured card. Then I sprinkled with Samsis Stamp Antique Gold Embossing Powder and Heat Set. Now that I have the sentiment done, I can relax and stamp the flowers along the bottom of the card. I stamped the large floral bouquet first in Antique Linen Distress Ink and then filled in with a few of the individual images. I didn't mask the first layer, but instead wiped away any ink with my finger that would overlap with the previous stamping. I can fill in any gaps later on and my main aim with this card is not to go for a detailed botanical look. I find it interesting to see my style develop over time. I've never been one for the super detailed botanical look and although I love the look of loose florals, I often find those too loose and so I hit the middle ground, not too detailed but not too loose either. I probably err towards the looser side of the spectrum, but I do like adding layers and the true loose florals are often done with one layer in that swoosh of a brush stroke. I have so much respect for people who can do that, but for me I go slowly slowly building up layers and a little detail until I'm happy. When painting I usually like to start with leaves. I love greens and leaves are one of my most favourite things to paint. I also feel they provide a solid structure for the more floaty florals to follow. I started with a light layer of a warm yellow as a base layer and this will give a glow to all layers painted on top. That's the beauty of transparent watercolours in that the layers play together to create the finished look. The first layer is a mix of Cranacodone gold along with whatever was already on my palette. I'm not one for having a clean and tidy palette. I love to see well used messy palettes where colours intermingle to give exciting results. Following on from the base layer, I added a green layer. This is a mix of Undersea Green, Indrathrone Blue and Lunar Black. The initial layer is quite dilute and then using the wet on wet technique to drop deeper colours into the base layer, sorry, into the base of the leaf and letting the colour move with the water. I think wet on wet is my favourite watercolour technique. The movement of the paint through the water is almost like a slow moving wave rolling on a beach. It's so beautiful to watch. With the leaves now done, I moved on to the flowers. I'm using mixes of Quinacridon Gold for the flower centres, along with a deep, rich mix of Alizarin Crimson and Lunar Black, with a touch of undersea green to knock back the brightness a little. For all the flowers, I'm concentrating on dabbing the yellow in the centre, followed by the crimson mix around the edges of the centre, and then pulling the colour out from the flower centre over the petal with a damp brush. My aim is to have deeper colour at the base of the petal, then a highlight area over the body, and finally just a hint of colour to the petal edges in places as they curl back. In places I'm taking a little of the yellow mix and adding to the petals, 
which mix with the crimson to give ranges of hues from crimson to orange to yellow. To paint the rest of the flowers, I'm basically following this same method. One thing to be aware of is to avoid painting areas which are next to each other, if they are still wet. I mentioned above that paint moves with water in the wet on wet technique, and if you paint two areas next to each other while the paint is wet, then the colour will likely move between the two areas and blend and merge to form one area. So to keep the definition between petals, it is best to move around the flowers, painting one at a time. I'll play some music now while I continue painting. I've kept all the painting in, but to do so I've sped up the video so I don't really paint anywhere near this fast. In fact, I paint really slowly. I think it's worth knowing that this card took about two hours to complete. Watercolouring is certainly not for speedy card making, but for me, you can't beat the final look. Having finished the flowers, I added a light loose background wash and now I'm using dots of white gouache followed by dots of a deep sepia mix to the flower centres and the play of light and dark brings them to life. Next up is some splatter and if you've been following me for a while this would come as no surprise. I find a light splatter over a watercolour piece as that ethereal look which suits flora so well. I like to use the solution of perfect pearls and then follow up with white gouache. You need to add a dot of gouache to your work surface and then a little water to get a mix which splatters nicely as it's too thick straight out of the tube. I remove the painter's tape which have been keeping my panel flat on a board and preventing it warping depending on how much water I used and then I trimmed off the edges of the piece to create a panel just smaller than an A2 card base. I added a generous covering of foam adhesive to the back and added the panel to a card base cut and scored from Nina Desert Storm card in the 100 pound weight for sturdiness. I wanted to use one of the coordinating sentiments from the Thankful Flower set and so I used some of the green paint mix I used for the leaves on my card to paint a piece of hot press watercolour card. I used hot press as this is smooth and so will give a good stamped impression. However, I used cold press card for my main panel despite having stamped and embossed on that. And that's because I prefer painting on cold press paper. I like the texture of the card and the way the paint behaves with the texture. 
and so I'll take a little extra effort on the stamping and embossing on the main panel to get the look I like on the watercolouring. However, for a simple sentiment strip, hot press card is the way to go. I stamp the greeting in clear embossing ink, sprinkled with white embossing powder and heat set, before trimming to a skinny banner and adding to the card with foam adhesive. I used a T-square ruler to ensure I had it on straight, as I don't have an eye for straight lines. Finally, I accented the card with Nouveau Dream Drops in Fairy Wings and Dragon Scales. And that completes this watercoloured autumn floral border card. On the Sam So Stamp blog, you'll find a coordinating blog post, as well as details of the supplies I've used today. If you want to find me, I blog over at LimeDigitDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.